Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, friends and colleagues from across the world. Today, we have a very special and exciting guest with us, an expert on the topic of corporate practice of medicine and dentistry, uh, Dr. Michael Davis. Thank you for joining us. I'm pleased to be with you and your audience. Dr. Davis, uh, this is a personal uh, honor to have you, and it's been a great uh, 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 part of my career, and as well as yours for the 15 years that I've known you, in terms of uh, what we have done for our colleagues in the profession in exposing the truth about this uh, uh, ongoing DSO virus that we're going to collectively call them as a DSO virus. They have hidden behind uh, the words of the names, uh, acronyms of DSO, D, D, uh, DMSO, uh, DPO, MSMO, and on and on it goes. But ultimately, they all have the same RNA, and, uh, and this RNA needs to be exposed. Uh, much like a parasite, uh, these organizations, uh, uh, this particular virus acts much like a parasite, and what it does is it overwhelms its host in an opportunistic fashion uh, in our communities. And it's always there waiting for, for, for a good time to strike. So we have you on the, on the podcast here. Before I go uh, on on, this, uh, 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 on the session, I'd like to introduce everybody to uh, uh, my personal hero, Dr. Davis, who will never compromise his ethics and his knowledge and his duties to the profession and to, to, uh, to other doctors and colleagues for any kind of monetary profit or uh, monetary means of any kind, which is highly respectable. Much kudos to you, doctor. I've seen you fight and fight for 15 years without a iota of a compromise. Um, so his childhood started in Boston. He's actually currently in New Mexico. He graduated uh, uh, from the University of uh, Massachusetts, Boston in 1975, an undergraduate degree in biology, minor in German. That's odd. I graduated with uh, biology and minor in German uh, from Western Illinois University. Wir sprechen halt noch Deutsch äh, zusammen. Uh, worked as forensic chemist and later research assistant at Massachusetts uh, General Hospital. Entered dental school in 1978 at Ohio State University School of Dentistry. Graduated in three years in 1981. I went to Illinois, and uh, uh, so you are uh, sure very uh, familiar with the good old Midwest uh, hospitality. Served in uh, USPHS in Oklahoma. Private general practice in Maine uh, since 1997, relocated in Mexico, to New Mexico in 2000. And um, uh, he has uh, uh, been uh, an associate to other doctors and has seen a lot of uh, uh, people come and a lot of models go in this, uh, uh, in this environment. He was established in Santa Fe as a, in his uh, private practice, and he's still there till today. Um, Dr. Uh, Davis, practices. He doesn't uh, just only uh, preach others to practice and do this and that. He's a practicing dentist. He's been an expert uh, for many cases, many, many cases of malpractice, fraud, unlawful and licensed practice of dentistry by corporate entities. If you guys ever need an expert, uh, uh, Dr. Davis is the person to call in this country. Um, dentistry Today, Dentistry, uh, uh, Dentist the Menace, Dental Town, uh, uh, LinkedIn, everywhere you go, you will find articles that he's spreading. For the benefit of our uh, colleagues, uh, when the politicians and the public servants fail us, when organized dentistry sells us out, Dr. Davis and our colleagues are there for you to, uh, uh, to inform you about uh, what is going on really behind these uh, abusive corporations that are constantly trying to interfere with the patient-doctor relationship. Um, uh, most doctors do realize that the system is dirty. And most yes. do realize that it's illegal in vast territories across the world. And uh, most realize that something needs to be done, but they don't know how. We will discuss that with you today. Um, Dr. Davis, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Ah, oh, you're more than welcome. Let's get started. Let's get some, some data out to these wonderful listeners. So, Dr. Davis, um, give us a brief idea of how you got involved uh, in, in, in researching and learning uh, um, about corporate dentistry. They weren't around 40, 50 years ago. Insurance started out of a, out of a um, um, grocery store. And now you have uh, these third parties uh, circumventing laws to tell us how we need to practice dentistry. How did you get involved with that? Well, personally, 
I, I saw some children that were like, they looked like uh, James Bond movie, Jaws, baby Jaws, all these steel teeth. What the heck was going on? I, I couldn't figure it out. Investigated, investigated, investigated. And at that time, this is many years ago, this company is now defunct, bankrupt, no longer called Small Smiles Dental. Fine. That's the one company I may mention today because they're defunct. So I investigated that and I found others were also investigating them. Many, many of our disadvantaged children were harmed. It, it, it really disturbed me how these kids were subjected to severe gross overtreatment and abuse by doctors. My colleagues, uh, that, that ripped my heart apart. Ear to ear steel crowns, pulpotomies, baby root canals that were totally needless, minimal to no dental caries, uh, very upsetting. Uh, and and the, the parents carrying all this guilt and shame, why? Because they're poor and they couldn't get to a, a, a reputable pediatric dentist or a reputable dentist. They had to go where the government sent them, the list of Medicaid providers. And in many cases, just deplorable, deplorable clinical outfits and really run not by doctors, not by doctors, run by corporate entities. Well, that's how they circumvent the law. As you know, in 47 states, it's illegal to have uh, for them to own as much as a pencil in a dental office, let alone fixtures and building and this and that and all the other things that they uh, get in as a management company, which they're not supposed to do. But they circumvent the laws by setting up uh, shell companies in different states like Florida, Delaware, uh, Nevada, and then they dump the charts on, on the doctor and hold all the assets. The doctor is just a, a puppet, you know, it's a no control doctor. And uh, then they bring in all of these younger doctors that are heavily indebted and uh, force yep. them to produce more and more. Uh, set yep. daily agendas. We got to make 5,000 today, 10,000 today at the morning huddles. And on and on goes. And when something goes wrong, they point right at you because you hold the license. Yeah, and, and, yeah you're going to. Yeah. So, okay, let's get, uh, let's get further into it. They, they come with two major lies. Number one lie, the increased access to care. It's our contention that Doctors increase access to care, not some business MBA guys and hedge funds and all of that. Number two, they say that they reduce the management burden on doctors. Uh, um, if you have a good office manager, they become useless, really. You had a good staff, they're useless. What is your take on these two massive deceptions that are being perpetuated on doctors and the public? Uh, the, the, the claim access to care has become so overused, so abused in marketing spend. It's used in the public health community. It's used in the DSO community, uh, the dental management community. It means everything. And when you come down to it right now, it means nothing. Uh, find out the specifics. Don't go by these emotional spin words, these phrases, these jargons. Find out specifically what they mean. Because that term means many different things to many different people. Now, what the the second question? I'm sorry, counter. The second was uh, that uh, they uh, reduced the burden on the doctor, <laughs> so the doctor can spend more time with the patient and care better for the patient. Uh, yeah, they're not that's mentioning right. that they're uh, you know they're not mentioning that they're teaching everybody to empty the pockets of the doctor of the patients before yeah. they do. Like that's some sort of uh, that's somehow an ethical conduct, maximizing everything they can from fluoride treatments, whatever it is. Right. So well, we, can, we, can what is your the, we can get into some of the details, how they're uh, the different companies are setting up different means to build up production, which have absolutely no value to the patient, None. no value to the patient whatsoever. But it's a means to increase billings. Um, so what I is will, on that particular point that. Uh, they, uh, they, they um, somehow reduce the burden so the doctor can oh, that's nonsense. take care, right? Oh, no. Take care how we treat our patients. They don't care. Uh, how, no, 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 no. These are, these are uh, uh, ultimately, they're fundamentally Wall Street people, fundament, uh, fundamentally private equity people. That's where the money is ultimately going to go. They, they care about one thing. They have one obligation, and that is to increase profits for their shareholders. They have no connection to the doctor-patient relationship no comprehension or even concern or caring 
what that means. It's not their fiduciary duty. It's not their fiduciary duty. It is not. The duty is the headphones to whoever they got the money from to set up the scandal. They're all structured like pyramid and uh, and, and and Ponzi schemes. Uh, and when the money dries up, they start going belly up. Have you noticed how many of them have gone belly up this year? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's Ponzi schemes. I mean, there's nothing but a Ponzi scenario. They have no interest or obligation, but we do. We have an Hippocratic Hippocratic oath. We have an, a contract with the patient that we're going to work in the best interest of the patient. That's an enforcement correct. contract everywhere. That's so correct. what do we say to the doctors that have sold us out or the organized dentistry that has sold us out to these corporate parasites? Well, I, I can understand with the young doctors. The young doctors are not getting the, the real information in their education, their training in dental school. They don't get it. They're not given this, this data. We need to get this information out to them. Uh, uh, we've got, they're graduating with, on average, it's on average, just under $300,000 in student loan debt. Uh, that's, that's like uh, debt bondage. They've got a huge monthly payment due every single month. And it's not dischargeable in a bankruptcy court. It's a federal loan. Right. So they're stuck with this. This is just a, a weight around their necks. But there is a way to beat that, that, doctor. There is a way to beat that. You don't need to take another half a million dollar loan to set up your... your you can associate with another doctor and I use that agree. as a stepping stone to set up your own practice. I started a practice with $100,000 and started clocking in a million dollars after two years. You can do the same. You can negotiate with, with, with vendors and say, hey, I want to delay payment on this equipment and that equipment. You can start small out of two chairs right. and get a small space. And you can start your own life. And within a year or two, you're working three, four days a week. You're loving life. You make your hours. You order your supplies. You hire your own people. You keep your own equity because that is right. where you're at. They steal your equity. They steal your equity right in front of your eyes based on lies about benefits, uh, health insurance, uh, student buyback programs, and all the nonsense that n never really materializes anyway. It's just a scandal to get you in. And once they got you in, when they let you out, after all the contracts you signed, you can't talk. See you later. Revolving door. Bring in the next guy. And bring in the next guy. Bring in the next guy. Who cares? Bring in the next guy. They're all worth something. They'll do Sherman something. Sherman Burnham. Yeah, turn them and burn them. I do not see, I mean, a lot of people will may or may not disagree with me. I do not see one DSO or virus operation that is legitimate if they own as much as 1% in a, in a practice. The only way I foresee them to be with us in harmony before they collapse, we're not going to collapse. We outnumber them worldwide. And the reason we're putting this on this platform today is for all of our colleagues around the world to know what virus has been going on in North America and Europe to protect themselves from this uh, from this trend that's destroying medicine and healthcare and has destroyed pharmacy and has destroyed optometry and has destroyed medicine and now they're coming for us for dentists and now they made a big mistake because we're going to reverse everything and we're going to regain we, ha we already have optometrists and pharmacists coming to this doctor doctor uh, platforms that we have built because they're looking for a solution to this corporate mess that these guys have created patients don't trust us anymore they try they, right. they think we're trying to steal from them the doctor trust them they don't trust us because when a patient goes to an office, they don't know they're in a corporate setting. I highly urge patients and doctors to always ask, is this a chain operation? Are you right. in a big box type scenario? Because there is no uh, there is no love in there. Uh, it's all about getting you in and getting you out and emptying your pockets and staying out of lawsuits. And and, and that's, uh, that's how they play. So here we are. Uh, if you're calling them out, the only way I see us to be able to be in harmony as, as, a, as a medical community with them is to put the charge, first of all, 100% back in the hands of the doctor. There's no other way. And provide your services a la carte. Tell us, hey, your, your bookkeeping is going to cost you this much. Your staffing is going to cost you this much. Your, 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 your management is going to cost you this much. But don't ever, ever try to take our equity because that's when we come looking for you and things like this happen, like today. But uh, go on, Doc. Uh, what else would you tell a dentist, that a uh, dental student that gets solicited by these uh, uh, viruses and parasites at the dental school to come and join them with all the lies and all the promises of the future that don't materialize? Well, I want them to get some reality under their belt. They're not generally going to get that in their undergraduate training. So I'd love for them to work uh, under the wing of a, of a private doctor, if that's what they choose to do initially, but they could do 
service and public health service, prison dentistry, military dentistry, um, uh, many options. But don't just jump in with these corporates. Uh, what they, they, I talked to some of the young people after they've been through these experiences. They're, they're, they're shattered people. Their souls have been damaged. I'm not kidding you. Their souls have been damaged by working in these environments, uh, making daily quota. Yes, they monitor your, your production daily. They have something called a daily dashboard. They're going to monitor your quota, your production quotas daily. Uh, they don't. There, there's no concern about individual, this situation with this patient, or this one had special needs, or this one was elderly and we had to really go slow with our treatment. Nah, it doesn't matter. These people are numbers people. They got to make their, their, their quarterly numbers and they're going to do it on your back, doctor. You are a sharecropper's mule. You will be worked into the ground. That is the design. That's the model. That's how it's designed. It's designed to, uh, to uh, benefit a few at the cost of many, the cost of many doctors. The little and group patients. On the top, and patients. Uh, but uh, at no disregard for uh, no no regard for what we went through when we went through dental school, they were talking about benevolence and autonomy. Autonomy is so important. You know, when you don't get to select your materials, you don't get to set your hours and your staff and and every little thing that comes with it, it trickles down to chair side. Every one of those things are interferences of the patient doctor relationship. Doesn't matter how they frame it. The minute they have control, like you like to say 51% control, I like to say as much as 1% control. They should not be permitted to own as much as a pencil in a dental office or a medical office or an optometry stuff. They're supposed to work for us, not the other way around. If you guys, you know, you know what happens to guests that come? We are living in a world of obsolescence. Guests that come into a professional industry and don't behave and start messing with the, with the professionals, they always end up losing and they disappear in time. And they will have a very bright and short-lived candle if uh, if uh, if they don't uh, candle light if they don't continue to work with us and be on the right side of history because we will stand up we will get up and we will we will correct the situation um so that's the dentist at the dental school great now you go into the private sector and you got the guy that is older that wants to get out and uh, and uh gets a nice little lucrative um, offer uh, not knowing that the corporation is going to come in and enslave the next generation of doctors. Um, my recommendation to them is sell to a dentist, an independent dentist, an independent thinker, an independent soul, and uh, and not to a corporation. You'll do the world a, a, a great uh, a great honor. Bring them in, uh, take them under your wing, and then transition out. That's how medicine and health can survive so we're not enslaved to the corporations. And what does your take to the older generation that's struggling financially? Or well, that's the ideal. That is the ideal. But you got to, and it's not just older docs. There's docs who are in their 40s that are just burned out. And uh, they sell to the corporations as well. And uh, there's usually some kind of a back end deal to keep them there. And that's a, that can be the, that, those final year and a half, two years working for that corporation is often a, a big eye opener for those doctors. They'll change out staff, get the cheapest people in there possible, have the place understaffed, tell you who you must refer to. Here are your supplies, doctor. You don't like it? Lump it. Um, they control your hours of operation and they'll squeeze you out to cut you out of a back end payment. That's been done many times. Uh, when you sell, Get as much money up front as you possibly can because they'll try to screw you on the back end payment. That's 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 been litigated many, many times. Uh, don't don't be a victim because uh, these guys will screw you. Uh, oh, they come in with, a, you know, the pretty smiles, Gucci shoes, Armani suits. Oh, they look slick. They got the nice Rolex. They got the Breitling watch. Oh, they got it all. They got the beautiful car. They got the private jet. They got it all. And man, they can give you a piece of that. Wow. Uh, no. no. Oh, you're picking up in hot cars from the airport. It's just like disgusting, most disgusting kind of behavior. 
It's like sending a keen to what the big pharma does, uh, 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 bringing in uh, uh, doctors and flying them all over the world for the, whoever sells the most drugs. It's the most disturbing thing, the most disconcerting thing I've encountered in dentistry and medicine. So you get these guys in dental school, they came with a, with a Hummer. You're all in our fourth year, and one of the guys that graduated two years working for these corporations, they sent him out with a Hummer, and he was driving around, and everybody was like, ooh, I can be in a Hummer uh, as long as I go work for this uh, corporation uh, that was actually based out of Illinois, one of the bigger ones. And, uh, and I don't know Illinois. Sell yeah. big ones in Illinois. You you know which one I'm talking about. You flew in. Well, I know that you, one, but but yeah. then there's several other. There's yeah. some in, there's there's another pretty big one in uh well there's actually a couple out of suburban uh Chicago. But that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about one perhaps yeah, in well, the let's, farmland. Let's not even go to there. In my opinion, they're all the same uh viruses and, and disgusting uh, uh rodents that uh, uh should be uh removed out of our profession. And they should be playing nice by uh, offering a la carte services, but uh, here nor there. So they enticed you. They put us in a room and they were telling us about all the wonderful continuing education, all the benefits that you're going to get. Yeah, we'll give you everything. Just let us rob you of your, uh, uh, it's a keen of somebody coming into your home and saying, hey, you know, we'll just own your house, but we'll give you, we'll buy you groceries and, and we'll bring you, we'll bring you, uh, We'll bring you some fresh clothes and uh, and all of that. But would you be okay with someone coming into your house that you own and say, hey, we're going to own it now and we're going to give you some stuff that you need to survive? No, I am not okay with it. This is my house. You come into my house, you act according to my rules. So if you want to give me what you offer, I'll let you, you know, clean the backyard. I'll let you clean the house. I'll let you trim the bushes. But you ain't going to take over my house. It's my house, my equity. So that's the attitude we have to take with them. How do we beat them out of our communities? They're coming into our communities from everywhere, right? So Correct. the one thing that we have that they don't have is maneuverability. We can overnight make a decision to go and do something with the high school or get into the chamber or get some billboards up and do something cool. They have to go through a process. When they want to go from analog to digital, they have to drop hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, we don't have that. We can just go immediately to digital and then and, and, and market it that way. So we have to be business wise. We have to position ourselves better uh, uh, locally. And we have to one by one chase these illegal operations out of our communities. They think they can outcompete us, but they can't. Uh, uh, we are in sheer numbers. We're much bigger than them. Our problem is we're boxed into little, uh, little, little uh, buildings and rooms and uh, and then thousand square, two thousand square feet, whatever it is we go to every day. And we have our families, and we have lost track. We don't have a, a commonality, solidarity uh, to 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 address this problem. But this is what we've been working on. All, you have worked on it for most of your uh, 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 your second phase of your career, and I've been working on it for many years. And look at where we are. You know, our last event we had two point over two million uh, uh, viewerships in our last global summit. But what are we after? We are after these third parties that wanna that wanna interfere with the patient doctor relationship. Every one of them, from insurance to to DS, uh, to the DSO virus, uh, to the to the big pharma. Uh, uh, as doctors, we're the most powerful entity on earth. You bet. Yeah. I, I, I just want to get into something. We, we, we use that term doctor-patient relationship. And I really want to just, just give some elaboration. And what we've got is basically a legal contract between the doctor and the patient. Now, it's not an ordinary contract. This is not ordinary commerce like the DSOs would like you to believe. This is not the buying and selling of widgets. This is not used cars. You as the doctor, you have advanced skills, knowledge, training, which the patient has no hope. No, there's no chance they can have your expertise. So therefore, under, under ethics and under law, both under ethics and law, you have a fiduciary responsibility. You have a responsibility to place the interests of the patient foremost not, not your pocketbook necessarily. I'm not saying you can't earn a living, but the patient's interest must come first. Now, when we've got a third party, often undisclosed, usually undisclosed to the patient, be it a DSO, some kind of a, a hidden ownership, what you've just done 
is you've, you've not disclosed that to the patient. They're, they're not advised of that. That has totally invalidated the doctor-patient relationship. The doctor-patient relationship at that point is null and void. Um, these patients are vulnerable. I've had doctors tell me, some doctors older than me, they look at the doctor-patient relationship beyond a legal contract, but it's something sacred. Something sacred. You have a charge doctor with looking out basically over a flock, uh, groups of people in your community who really don't have uh, the background you have, and they are trusting in you. And then we've got uh, doctors who are positioned working for a corporation that's selling that out. They're selling out that trust. Um, sure. It breaks my heart. I don't want to see that in our profession. It's got to change. It's got to change. My, my opinion, if you don't want to manage a medical practice and you don't want to associate, maybe dentistry and healthcare is not for you. Somewhere else, do something else, you know, go into, uh, uh, go into setting up a uh, uh, retail company, retail stores or houses or whatever it is. If you want to care for your patients, you must be in charge. You must be in charge over your staff and over your management. The person that's on site, not some guy that's been bribed to put his name on 20 offices so these DSOs oh, can play their that's game. So common. So common. Yeah, uh, so when dentist comes in, you know, we'll write you a check. I've seen, I've seen attorneys. This is so disgusting. I've seen attorneys. In my investigations, my private investigations, in the back of an office, with a stamp of a doctor, just stamping every paperwork that comes through. That doctor, you know, has got his name on 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 offices, and is on vacation. Right. And some young doctor right. is on the right. scene. The, the young doctor on the scene. And the young doc doctor in the scene is pressed to go in this room, do two crowns, in this room, do the denture, and do this room, do the thing, but somebody who's not even a dentist, some sort of floor supervisor. And if you, if you fight back, the supervisor goes to the management, the management will fire you and get you yep. kicked out of the door so fast, you don't, yep. you won't even know, uh, they'll have your head spinning. <clears throat> you're kind. So, I'd say that, that that door hits you so fast when you're going out, be careful, doesn't whack your butt. That's There's right. You're going out of there. You play their you're game the, and you're out the door. You're the no control doctor. You are no control. You are out that door. Uh, all I can do is confirm what you say. I've seen the same exact things. We've got um, DSOs which retain the doctors solely for the purpose of being fake owner dentists. Fake owner dentists of multiple practices. It is disgusting. They own and control nothing. When I when I review and review um, uh, read and review the, the 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 contracts between the ownership and the DSO, and they off they can call that a management service agreement, business service agreement. Sometimes it is an administrative services agreement. Um, you know that doctor is simply a, a a a nominee owner. They're a nominal owner. They own nothing. It's all a sham. Um, it's it's reprehensible. Um, and then we've got young doctors who are working under the fake owner dentist, who they probably never see. How often? It's they don't not know. a mentorship arrangement. And when things escalate and this thing goes to court, they muddy the waters and uh, bring up all of these contentions about access and how they do this. And they, that's how they get the support from the public servants. Even if, excuse my language, half a... Yeah, better not go there. But even half of the uh, half the public servants, uh, 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 even when they're sincere, they don't know what they're talking about. They didn't go to medical or dental school. They don't understand the patient doctor relationship. They think they do, um, but uh, standing on a on a on a on a pole in front of millions of people and and trying to get reelected is not the same thing as being a doctor who cares for their patients. So there are really some exceptions. There are some exceptions. And people like me are working with some of them. You are. Yeah. I'm working with some legislators. They are. Um, I mean, there are expe exceptions, Doc, but I want to be we're working, we're trying. that they, they still need to be educated. They're not all yes. understand what the situation is. You have lobbyists. They got lobbyists uh, uh, on speed dial. I went to dental board meetings in, uh, in Illinois trying to stop these guys. And every time I showed up, rest assured, they sent a couple of their friends to make sure that... Uh, that right. the person was uh, uh, was disturbed or interrupted or or whatever it is that they do. They have lobbyists at state levels, the government levels, 
uh, um, at the, the people going to dental schools, medical schools, they're uh, well set. But uh, you know, uh, yeah, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna validate what you say. We've got uh, DSO reps and uh, franchise reps that go right to the dental school. They drop hundreds of thousands of dollars into that dental school. All right, to buy support for their business model. Uh, uh, we could we could talk about, how you talked about the lobbyist issue, uh, where it was the most disgusting I've ever seen was what the uh, DSO industry did in North Carolina. And the doctors really, really tried to hold firm. They end up having to take a compromise, but I'm very proud of my colleagues in North Carolina. They, they, fought, they fought the good fight, but man, so many of those legislators were bought off. That's it's all about money. It has nothing to do with medicine and healthcare. It's all about money with these guys. They will say and do whatever they want to get their way, and they'll put so much money behind it. And but sometimes, you know, history will teach us well. Uh, certain people will come around and 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 make you stop, and make you stop as an industry, make you stop as a person. Uh, uh, and and these people are us doctors. So you know, when we started a doctor doctor relation uh, uh, platforms, and there's currently 15 platforms going on. Uh, from where we started in 2013. And in these 15 platforms, that's what we're promoting. Get rid of the middlemen, all of them, because they are the ones that are increasing the fees and uh, to, the, to the consumers. The, the problems of our industry are these hawks, hedge funds, management groups, insurance now that's dictating treatment. Who are these people? Where do they come from? Uh, you know, the door is right there. If, you know, if they continue damaging our industry, maybe we should kick them all out of the door. But anyway, these insurance companies, everybody talks about it, but nobody wants to do anything about it. We hear about this in groups. We hear about this from our private conversation. The dentist down the street is not my enemy. The dentist uh, is not my competition. He's my friend. He's my colleague. He's my brother or my sister. The corporation that's lingering, the insurance company, those are our enemies. They devalue our work. They destroy our, our reputation. They eliminate, they terminate, uh, and interfere with the patient-doctor relationship and patient trust, uh, frankly. So we must unite against this very rapidly growing virus and uh, and create a shield to 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 stop it and to 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 bring it back to compliance. Not only do you know why they wrote those laws that you are aware of for forty-seven states in the U.S. Protect doctor-patient relationship. Done. Nothing else. They wrote it because they knew the people that wrote those laws knew that if these uh, financial vultures ever came into the medical and healthcare dentistry, the patient and doctor relationship will be uh, will be compromised. They knew it. They still know it. Organized dentistry knows it. Like some of these executive directors who are not even doctors or dentists, they know it, but they are Thank there to protect them. Thank you for bringing up organized dentistry because wouldn't it be nice? Nice to have an extremely large scale operation that was looking to protect the doctor patient relationship rather than an organization that had an attitude of a hands off attitude with corporate practice of healthcare. It's disgusting. Um, they're going to go the way of the, the AMA. AMA was a big organization when I was a young doc, not anymore. ADA is losing membership. Big time. ADA is losing membership too. That's true. But you know what? Uh, what you learn from time is that uh, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. These organizations grow around the banks and the financiers and the hedge funds and everybody else. Uh, they grow tall around them. They don't grow tall about us. They take our membership fees, enjoy a, enjoy a lavish lifestyle at the highest levels of these organizations, and I've seen it. Uh, but you don't matter. You're just another paying member, uh, and uh, and uh, they pay more. They pay more towards advertising, towards uh, towards uh, uh, influencing the minds of the owners and the and the corporate. Yeah, that's what they do. Because if they get one person to say they're good, you know, all the audience is going to say, "Oh, well, they're probably wonderful. There's probably nothing wrong with them." But dissect the model. We are surgeons. We are DDSs and DMDs and MDs. This is what we do. We dissect models. We solve problems from the minute we get up to the minute we go to sleep. Dissect their models. In 15 years, I've not seen one model where there's not a conflict of interest, where there's any kind of ownership by an outside party. Can't happen. There's a conflict of interest, conflict of fiduciary duty, conflict of patient-doctor relationship. You must be in control. 
You must exercise autonomy and benevolence. That's what we signed up for. That's what should execute. So what Those else? decisions have to be made between the doctor and the patient. That's correct. Uh, the patient's inputs are critical, absolutely critical. And, and the doctor has that training, that advanced training to help evaluate it. The patient may want X, Y, Z, but under standards of care, that's not in the patient's best interest. So there's a way to handle that. But to um, uh, the corporation, they want those. They want those quarterly numbers. They want your daily quota numbers. So you got to produce them, and that's at the expense of the patient. And that's that's gonna that's gonna crush the professions, all of them. It's yeah. crushing medicine now. Um, it's crushing it like, you know, brutally. Let's, let's let's go back into your time 20 30 years ago when when they weren't as oh, big as God, I'm a geezer. What, what, what you <laughs> well you've yeah. been around for a minute doc so you've seen it back in the day in the midwest wasn't it lovely when a patient came to the same doctor same the same doctor there was a relationship there it was a community thing you were keen to to police officers and keen to firefighters and community friends instead of uh, being a being a slave to a marketing function and disgusting uh, structure for uh, fame and glory uh, in terms of uh, using better uh, uh, better setups and, and, and hedge fund money and all of this disturbing crap that they brought yeah. with them, the baggage. What was better? Would, wouldn't wouldn't be in a be in a better place when we when we where we were 20, 30 years ago than we are today? I would absolutely agree and. The corporations also agree with you, and I'll tell you why. They do something not they they're branding. They do a lot of what we call stealth branding. So when the patient walks in, there's no company logo. Uh, they think it's their their neighborhood family dental practice under stealth branding. Many of the larger uh, DSOs absolutely engage this method. Some go with um, uh, their major brand. Uh, there's one that's, uh, we're not going to mention it, but they're currently in a bankruptcy proceeding. And they did, they went to, after they got their uh, settlement with the U.S. Department of Justice for fraud allegations, we're not going to mention the company, but um, uh, they changed their operation to a multi-branding operation. So in the state of Texas, they have uh, either four or five different brands. Each state has either one or two or three different brands. So that they, uh, they they spread it out. They, they they're deceptive. They're hiding who they really are. Uh, this is not right for the public. Public doesn't know. Public wants to avoid a certain brand. They they know what's gone down. They they it's public record as to what's public, gone down. The public so, doesn't like to go to these brands. They don't know. They go into an office. It's branded as a local, for example, uh, Jacksonville Dental or whatever you want to call it. They brand right. it as a local thing. They go in there. The patient thinks that they're coming to a sincere, kind doctor that's going to be working in their best interest. Little do they know there's an evil uh, uh, component in the background setting the stage and uh, and in some boardroom. We don't answer. To, we should never answer to boardrooms. They should answer to us, number one. They just they decide the dental laboratory they're just going to use for that crown or that denture or that partial. Oh, no, yeah, the they patient. decide. Not you, doctor. They decide. Yeah, it's uh, an interference with the patient. Every one of those things that you mentioned oh, is an interference with the patient-doctor relationship. Every one of those. Somebody's like, oh, what does the lab material have to do with it? Everything. It has everything to do with it. It has everything to do with what happens chair side. So that's not okay for them to select your laboratory. It's not okay for them to select your materials because you are in the back of your mind would think to yourself, is this the kind of material that I would want in my mouth? In their mind, it's like, oh, we can get this in bulk for 10% cheaper. Let's go with this one. Let's get it from here. Let's go with this guy. So it's it's no matter how they do it or how they attempt to do it, there is a conflict of interest. And you know this. I know this. They know this too. But how they hide it is a more disgusting scenario. They started as yep. DSOs. Then they rebranded their whole industry because they caused – look at the blog Dentist the Menace. Some uh, 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 lady that we both actually know, very sweet lady, had her grandkids tortured by one of these uh, yep. organizations in a, in a Papu sport. And she wrote over 2,000 articles that are up at dentistthemenace.com, I believe. Yes. Uh, or here, I'm going to put the blog uh, address right here on the site so everybody can go there. And there's also the 50 state laws that uh, uh, an attorney by the name of Jim Marwardy did 
and uh, and it lays out these you corporate. Your Irish money. What's that? You need to work on your Irish. Moriarty. Irish. Moriarty. Oh, Moriarty. Yeah. Moriarty. We, we, we love Jim. He's a great guy. Actually, I had a. Uh, I'd met Jim in Chicago some years back, maybe it could have been a, a, about a 10 years uh, back. Uh, and uh, very, very outstanding. I think he's also a former Marine, if I'm correct. Yes, Sergeant Marines. Sergeant Marine. Great guy. Great guy. Big shout out to Jim. If you're listening to this, I'm sure it's going to get uh, to Debbie and all of our other wonderful friends across the world. With over 2,000 artists. Debbie Hagen. Debbie, Debbie Hagen. Hagen. And on the uh, side, I put that there to block the interest in men. Yeah, wonderful person. Uh, we, you and I consider her sweet, and I do. But don't get on her bad side. I consider don't her, an her an angel. If, don't mess if, with her family. If our, oh, colleagues had, had fraction, if our colleagues had a fraction, the ones that work for, for them, they had the fraction of guts that Debbie does, they would be on a run. Uh, uh, to, oh, yeah. you know, off, the, off the edge of the earth. But Debbie wrote over 2,000 articles, as you know, and she has listed so many different companies that have either gone under or what they have done to the public or what they have done, these DSOs. You know, and, and I, I urge you guys to go there because you'll find a lot of goodies on dentists. It's called the blog, blog.dentistthemenace.com, or if you put in your search engine, Dentist the Menace, uh, you'll see it. And uh, there's more of these, and it lays out what the truth, the truth fabric of these organizations, uh, what they are, who they are, uh, where they have come from, and where they are going. Debbie is very good at that. Jim wrote that. Brian uh, was, if you recall, uh, uh, some 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 years ago had some uh, class action things going on, and there are many others that will help you. I get phone calls all the time from people that work for the DSO that got either severely screwed over. And they yep. wanted to see what their uh, what their options are, and yeah. usually they sign a lot of stuff at the beginning, which makes it hard. So you have to a, be very careful what you sign with these guys. Those contracts. Can I speak on, I speak on what you just said? Because yes. I get the same calls. I love these kids. These are our young colleagues. These are our our, our sons and daughters. In essence, for an old guy like me, not you, me. All right, I'm a geezer. I'm a dinosaur. But they're our next generation for me. And you want to leave something behind. The best advice I can give you, don't sign these contracts without retaining legal counsel and not just any legal counsel. They need to be having a little bit of a more than a little background in the DSO industry. It'll cost you, you know, twenty five hundred, three thousand bucks. I understand that. It's a big chunk of money to you guys. I know that that's a lot of money, but not like if you get into a legal action with them. And you're out $150,000, $300,000. And you will be because these guys have the money to fight you. They have big bucks. I mean, serious big bucks. They've got serious legal teams. Get, there's no such thing as a boilerplate contract. Get that employment contract reviewed. Have all the specifics laid out. Do not, you, you know when those DSO managers are lying? You know how you can tell? Their lips oh. are moving. That's how you can tell. <laughs> yeah, be, be increased. Oh, yeah, increased yeah. No, no, no scientific data to show for it. No, no, no verifiable. Yeah, we increase access to get. No problem. Let us do what we want. Everything is illegal. It's it's against everything that's medicine and healthcare stand for. But we'll, we'll do it. I wish we could start going down a list and mention their names, and that's bound to happen with time. Uh, if they don't start treating our colleagues better. But there will be no escape from them for them on this planet if they continue to compromise patient-doctor relationship as well as uh, uh, cause all of this harm, mental, physical harm to our colleagues across the United States, North America, and Europe uh, in general, where they have found their hosts to spread in. Uh, you know, the, the funny thing is the U.S., uh, the North America, the U.S. market and the European market is actually about almost 70% of the world's healthcare market. This is where, where these uh, money-hungry parasites will go first before they invade uh, and, and, and they invade uh, the other hosts that are remaining with Latin America and Asia and, and those. But we're going to warn them. We're warning them. We've been warning them for some time. Watch out for these uh, parasites. Don't let them into your countries. Don't let them into your communities. So, Dr. Davis, uh, how else? So, we are out with $300,000 of debt today, and I want to make career decisions. What do I do? Uh, you need mentors. Start getting mentors. 
and have mentors that have your best interests at heart, not not uh, how they can how they can use you, how they can put you in a meat grinder and churn you up, and they'll break your soul. What they what 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 they can put you through with damaging patients uh, that can break your soul. Don't get in that position, please. You can mentor with an older doctor or someone who's, when you say older, you get out of school, you may be 25, 27 years old. That may be somebody in their forties. You know, to me, that's still young, but hey, <laughs> but regardless. I turned 40 yesterday. You think that's young? I thought I'm going downhill from, from now, from today. <laughs> <laughs> Study clubs are essential. Uh, you need to, you need to network with a variety, not, not your own colleagues. That's a, in your own age group, that's a bubble. I, I want you some older docs, some more seasoned docs, spend some time with them, um, get to know them. Uh, you, you, you need their insights. And I, I, and they keep saying this thing about all oh, attorneys are cockroaches. You know, what's, what's the best thing, uh, about, um, what are 100 attorneys at the bottom of an ocean? It's a good start. You know, all these, uh, there are a number of attorneys which can save your butt. They're, yeah, they they can help you. There are a number of attorneys that are really good men and women, and they can help you negotiate um, a lot of things. But so many, I, I know in many of these demographics, the only employment available seemingly is with the DSO. Well, don't be afraid to relocate uh, because it's, it's only if you win. It's, it's only a few win with a DSO. With your own practice, it's a minimal. It's very minimal of how many dental offices go bankrupt. It's very, very rare because it's a lucrative business. You can always, what we can do, we can go into the office and have a great day and make $10,000 and everything is okay again. Many, many businesses can't do that. Dental businesses are not prone to much recession. They're not prone to much uh, of anything because people will take their shirts off their back to come and get out of pain. Get your dental office, live your own dream. Don't live their dream. You're living their dream when you work for them. Only if you succeed. And the ones that are going to push back, that are listening, uh, uh, think of your colleagues. Are you really telling them the truth? Is that what you want? Is for them to go and have their equity stolen and have, have them forced into positions and situations that is uh, part of uh, coercion? Um, is this what you really want for the healthcare industry? A bunch of corporations running our lives uh, let's get real. It might have worked for you, but it's not going to work for the other nine guys. You know, uh, stop lying and, 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 and face the truth. We have been deceived. We have been manipulated. And we need to restore our profession. That's my take on it. Fair enough. Um, I, I, used, I used this line in deposition. And it had to do with, a, it's, it, it dealt with a, it's just an outrageous level of Medicaid fraud. And with many of these corporations, and I'd probably say most, uh, if they're involved in the Medicaid sector, they're involved in fraud, some level of fraud. And here's the line. If you don't cheat, you don't eat. Okay? Uh, there's another one. And the, and the manager of this DSO, it's a Medicaid DSO, um, he used the line that they use in Wall Street. They used this with the, in the boiler rooms and the hedge fund boys. You eat what you kill. Yeah. I heard that one. That's amazing. You said that. I actually had one DSO executive tell me the exact same words. You eat what you kill. I've never worked for them before, but in, in one of my investigations, uh, I've uh, heard this line before. So, it might have been the same company. Wow. You, you, yeah, yeah. But I've, I, 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 these are three four year old little babies. Come on. Yeah. on get get with it. On the oh, front end, kids. On, yeah, on the front end, you know, back in the day, um, I, I wanted to get um, these settings for dentists to be in large box retail settings and set up their uh, set up their den dental offices there. Can't get much into what uh, what went there, but it was supposed to be a doctor owned office to reduce uh, reduce the overhead and utilize the traffic. It was stolen from me by the corporations when I was That's back right. and was naive. I think you recall that scenario. I've read, I've read the filings. I've read the briefs. You read the briefs. So I got, uh, the they took me for a nice little ride and uh, they took yes, my, they did. for me, before me, there wasn't a single one. 
And after me, now there's uh, ones growing and they got another puppet up there uh, that's doing it. Um, but uh, anyway, um, the corporations, let's not be naive. They're there to make money. And this is what it is all about, money. If money. you don't have, yeah, if you don't have, you can spin it every which way you want. It's about money. It's not about patient care. It's not about increasing access. It's not about reducing your management burden. That's all lip service, as Dr. Davis likes to call it, right? Lip service. Oh, I know lip service. I got a joke, but we can't use it on a public forum. We're not going to say it. <laughs> so, so It's good, but I can't say it. When I asked you at the beginning what motivated you to do this, I mean, you're one of the mo you know, you're one of my most loved heroes, and you should be the hero to everyone in the dental industry for what you have done, because you have no monetary gains out of this. You're not, not really... You're not after you're not after money. You're not after fame. You're not after, but you do the right thing every time for the colleagues. Where this love comes from, we know. It's it's like we are we are like the Marines as well. We have a bond. Doctors have a certain bond. Um, how do we? What do you think? A lot of them are going to collapse. You and I know this. They're Ponzi schemes. Oh, they're schemes. They already are. Huh? They already are. They're already cool. collapsed. So how do we accelerate the collapse and how do we restore uh, more and more? Well, how do we bring our colleagues back to, 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 to on the right side of history? What is your, what is your take? What, what else can we do for them? Okay, from our colleagues' perspective, again, they've been hammered pretty hard. That student loan debt is a huge albatross around the neck. That's brutal. That's, that's gotta, we gotta, we gotta get that under control. Uh, I, there's a term I use the dental education industrial complex. It's outrageous. We're graduating way too many students. It's, it's ridiculous. The job opportunities are not there like they used to be. Uh, and then when they get out, what job opportunities are there? Steals their students. We don't want that. Um, but we have a lot of baby boomers going out. And I understand with you, it's the same problem like you have mentioned. Um, we have uh, too many. We have six dental schools now in California. It's absurd. They go to Texas and oh, they go to Nevada. It's a joke. But uh, well, um, ultimately, they have an access to care problem. Give me a break. They're, yeah, well, they're they're all, they, they all have their hands in it. Everybody is involved in this big uh, uh, in concert. Is working in concert, and this is nothing short of a conspiracy. The, the, the dental schools are setting up. They're charging you know three, four, five hundred thousand dollars by the time you get. Orthodontists and oral surgeons and plastic surgeons coming out with like 800 grand in debt. And, and, and sometimes- Who makes the money? Where does that money go? Is it the professors? No, it's no. the administrators. And they're making some serious bank. Serious, serious. bank. It's, serious. it's outrageous. And they're also a corporation. Also a corporation. And we've got, so, we've got a dental school that's going to be opening up in uh, El Paso, down in Texas. All right, fine. Uh, Texas has already got three dental schools. You don't need a fourth. That whole yeah. sector, that sector in El Paso, that is a big Medicaid sector. But here, yeah, let me go back to Medicaid. You brought up a good point. You brought a good point. I understand that you say that the Medicaid ones, there, there's, uh, there's some sort of uh, element of fraud in many of them. Yeah, like that. pretty much. But they're getting smarter. You know, these viruses, they mutate. These parasites, they mutate. And they've mutated in the last uh, decade or two to going after the private sector without the Medicaid. Because if they know the Medicaid is involved, the government is going to flood in and they're going to look for them and they're going to get them. So a no, lot of the big ones. A lot of collusion. A lot of collusion. But there's, a, there's some big ones that, that shied away from Medicaid just yes, so they they did. Convince, you know, many laws, including uh, Stark and others, where one hand feeds the other and all of that good stuff. Stark laws and other things that they have done, so they don't accept Medicaid, so they can get around that. There are other medical uh, uh, scandals that they have going or on. Or they have one component that takes Medicaid, another component that is outside of the Medicaid sector, but uh, the. But you know, want to talk about the ones that don't take Medicaid because they charge high dollar fees, fee for service, PPOs. They make buku buck. Uh, on, on on staying away from Medicaid, so the legislators and the government. Uh, oh, but it's, it's the, the management is commingled, so they're they're tied in. They're going to be tied in legally. Because they're tied in legally, but but they're not taking Medicaid. 
who's got the, other than the state boards that are uh, that are monitoring it? Who has, who has, who has, who's overseeing these guys? Who's overseeing these guys? Nobody the doesn't care. If I mean, if you even nobody. call, nobody. They're doing it. They're doing it without supervision, without oversight. They're ripping off the public. They're ripping off the dentists, and they're destroying our profession without any oversight. All they have to do is not accept Medicaid. The government doesn't. I mean, the government goes after uh, government-funded programs. That's what they're interested in. That's what's going to make some prosecutor famous, right? Uh, yeah, uh, and they only, they only do that as a wrist slap as, as well. When, it, when, the, when the fraud gets so egregious, they go after pennies on the dollar. They get a few million bucks. Which is it? That's not even their their electric bill for the month. I mean, it's outrageous. Uh, I I can tell you, um, let's. There's one uh, manager of a of a certain Medicaid DSO. He had on his speed dial the the uh, director of a certain uh, Medicaid uh, a managed care organization in Texas. All right. And and, he, and and this MCO who administers taxpayers' money, okay, it's not their money going out the door, it's taxpayer money go out the door. They're they're just administrators. They had them all. They had all their numbers on speed dial. So once they got close to a certain uh, um, uh, number of of uh, aberrant billings, they give them a buzz. You gotta cut. Go, you gotta cut back. Gotta cut back. Got to cut back. We're gonna we're gonna be forced to do something. We, you got to cut back. Well, that's not oversight. That's collusion. <laughs> collusion, conspiracy, and uh, all we're gonna do work in hand and glove. Okay, the dollar. The the dollar is what what they care about. They will sell out anybody and everybody for the dollars. Uh, and uh, and uh, at the end, uh, um, they don't care about you. You're just another another uh, drop in the bucket. Um, a drop in they don't the care about people. They don't care about the American public. They don't care about taxpayers. They don't. They don't. In my opinion, you know, they're one of the biggest Medicaid problems fraud, okay. for health. I want to talk about bodies, just, they're the problem. Okay, go ahead. They are the contributors to broken healthcare systems. Yes. They, they are the they enable it. They enable it. If they, they enable disappear, it. we can all once again practice and care for our patients, reduce the prices, and then have it in an anomalous scenario, pay off our student loans, but they don't allow it. They're not increasing access to care and helping reduce burden management. They're destroying medicine Absolutely. at every level. There's not one level that I can think of that these corporations have not had the audacity to intervene with the dirty paws and, uh, and, uh, and their conniving ways. Uh, uh, conniving ways, that's the only way I can describe but what well, I've seen I, 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 I want to clear up for the listeners and the viewers a certain misconception. <clears throat> there's been a, a misdirection and a misrepresentation that there's all, what is Medicaid fraud? Oh, it's all these uh, uh, Cadillac queens that are cheating the system. Uh, uh, these, these allegedly poor people who are not, not entitled to benefits, who get their family members benefits and all this nonsense. That does exist. No doubt it exists but it's a very small number. Most of this government fraud money is, is corporate welfare. The vast majority, it's corporate welfare. It's outrageous. Doctors are not getting rich. <coughs> Patients are getting a, a miserable quality of care. And at the end of the day, these corporations are making a bundle and do they kick some of that back to the politicians? Damn right they do. Doctor, you've been doing it for for uh, uh, more than two decades. I've been uh, fighting these corporations with everything I got for 15 years. People often say, oh, you they might blackball you or they get afraid. I have they're the most they're the scared, the most scared people I have ever met. And I've been in, in and out of corporate executive rooms all of my career. The last 15 years I've dealt with the Fortune Tens, several of them, uh, six of them actually at the time. Uh, that I dealt with them. I've been in and out of corporate rooms, executives, lawyers, all of my career. I know how they think. I know how they operate. I've never seen a, 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 a bigger cowardly crowd than the corporate DSO executives. They're afraid as can be. They're hiding underneath the chairs. We don't need to be afraid of them. Stand up to them in the practices. Don't do yeah. what, what is unethical. Say no to the supervisor. 
say no to the corporate executive. This is how I am practicing dentistry. This is how it's going to be. I hold the license. I earned it. It's my ass, excuse my language, when things go bad. And uh, I'm going to do it my way. If you don't like it, see you later. Do not bow down to the corporations. They're afraid. They've always been afraid their entire, their entire existence. They know that once we know and once we find out and once we push back, there will be history. They will no longer, they will cease to exist. And, uh, and they will go back to where they need to be, which is work for us. So don't ever be shy. If, if you see that in any shape or form, whatever they're proposing, the laboratory, the materials, the staff that they've selected for you, whatever it is, resist, resist, resist. Because if thing hits the fan, you have the license, you have the authority, oh, you're, not them. You're going to be the first line. You're going to be the first target, doctor. Your, your backside, your butt is going to be in that chair in deposition. And you're going to be grilled. And it might be... Yeah, the lawyer asks the questions of you in deposition. Well, who do you think writes those questions? Is people like me. Mm -hmm. And if there's one thing you get from this video, I'm not a nice guy. I'm not. Fundamentally, if you're hurting the public interest, oh, I, oh I'm not a nice guy. <laughs> I, I'm coming after you. And if that means we squeeze you to get to a bigger fish, oh, yeah, we'll do that. Absolutely, 100%. We will squeeze you, doctor to get to the bigger fish because you sold out. You sold out your integrity. You sold out your ethics. You so sold out patient. your responsibility under doctor-patient relationship. Okay. So, you're 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 not on in my good light anymore. All right. So I will help those attorneys who go after you to squeeze you to get to the bigger fish. There, no question about it. We do that. But any doctor that wants to cross back over we will receive them in the profession with open arms. Absolutely. You, you have enabled them. There are them. brothers and sisters. We have to. There are yeah. brothers and sisters. We, we Come back to us. Work with us. Oh, be independent please, thinker. Please. People make mistakes. People can have redemption. People, once you see the dark side and how ugly that is, um, you can really, you can really help the rest of our profession. You know it. You've seen it. You know the compromises. Don't hide your head in shame. Please come out. Please share your experiences. Uh, you know, I love you. I, I, I do. I mean, I, I want you to come forth. Uh, talk about what you've seen. How, how they, 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 they just, just ripping at your soul. Things just daily gnawing at you. One egregious act against a patient. The next, the next, the next. Day in, day out. Just ripping you apart. Piece by piece by piece. In time, and then you get depressed, and you get uh, you get issues. You never get anywhere. You can't buy your issues. house. You can't pay off your student loans. You cannot get married uh, or whatever it is you're into. You issues can't like drinking. Issues like drugging. Drug issues it. like families breaking apart. Marriage is failing. Uh, addiction to shopping because you need external stuff to satisfy that big empty hole inside of you. Inside you. That's the corporate mentality. Welcome to the world of corporate dentistry and medicine. What you're, you're doing, doing is causing harm to the profession, to the patients, to everybody. That's what you're doing. If you enable them, and a message for the organized dentistry, if you are doing it to yourself. You lose membership because of what you have done to yourself. You put some goofballs up there that allowed these guys in. You endorsed them. You told us that they were good, and now everybody's suffering. Stop those practices and get back in helping doctors independent doctors especially the big ones they know who they know me they know us they know you and they know me um and we know what kind of uh, gatekeepers they have put into place to prevent and silence everyone that stands up to the corporate so they can continue scamming and taking the money uh from them in their in their most disgusting kind of ways but uh know that you're you're doing it to yourself everything that will happen to these organized organized uh, uh, dentistry operations is did it to themselves they supported the corporations we warned them we warned them for years and years and years now they're losing members fine it's it's uh, the dumb stupidity that they've done to themselves and if they continue doing that it will collapse for them because people are waking up it's, it's all over the internet. Everything with these corporate practice of medicine and dentistry, people are sick of it. And those guys that have done this to optometry and pharmacy medicine, uh, I would start uh, being worried.
I would start. Well, with. Hey, Honor, you, you talked about your heroes. Okay, so I'm a hero, whatever. Okay. You are. You're my hero oh, because okay. you will not compromise your integrity to anyone for no okay. reason. You won't I'll do tell it. you who my heroes are. My heroes are those whistleblowers. They've worked in the belly of the beast. They had kids to support, family members to support, a mortgage, a car payment. And they worked in the belly of the beast. And they thought, they assumed, they had that, that drive that they could change it from the inside out. No. No, it's too dirty. You can't do it. They eventually come to that conclusion. They speak up. They speak out. Uh, they, they go to um, a state's attorney's, a state attorney general's office. Most of the time, they don't want to even hear it. They don't want to hear it. No. That's a benefactor. They pay us money. That's a state jobs program. They they bring in our state money. Um, but those you whistleblowers understand. on the inside, I want to tip my cap to them. I, I want to give them every kudo I can. Um, please come forward. And I know uh, Keanu says something about, uh, and he, he's mostly right. These people at, in these management situations, they're cowards. They're punks. They're two-bit punks. Complete cowards. Uh, but that doesn't There's mean that no we have integrity, no honor. Zero integrity, zero honor. No, yeah, zero they're, they're, they're punks. Uh, what's a Fugazi. That's the term we use. A fake, you know. So, uh, we yes, I've had demand letters, legal demand letters, to try to shut me up. I've been phone calls to threaten me, to shut me up. All, All right? right? Ah, it gets old. You're a punk. You're punk. You know, you're a weenie. You don't know what it's like to go hungry. You don't know what it's like to uh, make a decision uh, uh, that's that's going to hurt you financially, but in the long term, you know it's the best thing to do. They'd have no idea about that. Well, Doc Davis, once your time is up, you'll be able to rest in peace and know that you did the right thing all your life. And I always commend you for your position of never compromise, always work in the best interest of patients. And don't trick your mind yourself that somehow these things are good and somehow that uh, benefits the patients because it does not. Um, all of those uh, whistles and bells and, uh, and, and, and uh, pretty pictures and the cars and the houses and all the stuff they used to entice you, they're fake. Uh, they don't exist. Uh, they're uh, they're illusion, as you say. They're I'm illusion. So glad yes, that, uh, you. Doctor patient. I'm going to go right back to it. Doctor patient relationship. You're going to have that as a retired person. You're going to have that. Uh, you're going to see generations of people that you have served as a doctor, as a pharmacist, as optician. Uh, uh, you're going to have that. And you'll see you're going to have a connection through generations. You're going to be you're going to have people long after you're dead that you've served and that you've benefited and are living a better life because of your efforts. And you're dead and gone. I'm serious. That's going to happen. You will experience that. Uh, but I want you to go along this path. I know it seems a lot harder. I know it does. And I know it for you. It seems risky. I know. Uh, there's people here uh, that, that, that can they'll give you a helping hand. There really are. Um, you don't go it alone. You don't go it alone. There's people that will they'll give you a helping hand. But these other people, they're a false god. Uh, I know the private jets, the mansions, the the, um, uh, the uh, uh, what do you call that? The, the pool. What's that thing in Dallas that clown had? Uh, he had the, yeah, the, the what North is that? Dallas. Yeah, yeah, the massive, uh, massive castle he has built himself. Oh, the castle and the the pool in the back. Now it wasn't a pool; it was a an amusement park. It, he was. It was like New Braunfels, the uh, you know the the, the water park. That's the water park. Blood money. Park. Oh, blood water money. park. Uh, just yeah, it looks so good, man. It looks good. Uh, you can provide hey. all these things. Hey. All things for your family, boats and no, it's mansions and, and vacations to exotic places. I know it looks good. I know it looks good, but it's shallow. It's, it's, but you can, I mean, in, in America, we have, this is the land of the, you know, this is the land of opportunity. If you want to work, there are other ways of making that kind of money. You can get into real estate. Real estate is always hot. You can get into investing. You can earn it the right way. 
the, the, the honorable way. And you can you can do this in this country. You can build mansions if that's what you're that's that's what you're into. But don't do it at the expense of an entire profession and expense of other human beings. That's when uh, that's when you you know how can you sleep at night? How can, could you sleep? How could you have a uh, have a have a clear conscience to be able they to? They don't have one. They they sleep well, Honor. They sleep very well. They do not have a conscience. Huh. They do not. They they don't have one. It, that's what we might call a sociopath. But be that as it may, they sleep very well at night. But for for the majority of people, it will destroy their spirit. Can't have that. Mm. And yeah, I want you to have set up your your IRAs, your four hundred one ks, your investments. I want you to diversify with your investments. I, I I want you to look at, you can get good at this. You can get very good at this, uh, but go diversification. Your investment is not as part owner, a paper owner on their non-publicly traded company. That's not an investment. You can, you're going to get squeezed out of that in a heartbeat. That can go bankrupt belly up. You for can whoever be, put the money into the health fund. fund. Uh, you can have liability claims against you. Yeah. You don't want to be in that position. Yeah. They, they, the only people that benefit really are the ones that are putting the money into the hedge fund, whoever that is from some foreign country sometimes, which is absurd. Some foreigner can invest in a fund that owns a dental office or some guy in yep. a distant place owns a piece. It's just freaking absurd. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, with that said, uh, doctor, I mean, my message to the public would be anytime you go to a medical, pharmacy, optometry, or dental office, look for your friendly neighborhood doctor. Always ask if they're part of the chain. They have to disclose it to you legally because if that comes out later, then they have big liability. Always ask the front desk, are you part of any kind of operation that's a chain that has more than three, four location. You know, some doctors have satellite offices or doctors own four or five offices yeah. that can handle. That's fine. Uh, but if they're a chain of any kind, any kind, large box retail setting, especially, those guys are the worst. Uh, they're the worst scandalous. Uh, um, uh, they always have one puppet dentist uh, that, uh, that acts like everything is dandy and smiles and gets on magazines and this and that. But ultimately, uh, that puppet uh, is a puppet. He's a sellout to the profession. He or she is a sellout to the profession. And uh, and we uh, must be diligent that we ask the office, are you part of a chain? Even even in your local communities. And on a doctor's side, oh, yeah. even in the local, they might be branded differently. What you think might yes. be a neighborhood doctor's office is really a, a, a scam to deceive you or to, for, to deceive you to believe that it is, but it's not. It's just a branded name owned by some corporation. So you have to ask, Anytime you call to make an appointment, is this part of any chain? For the doctors, the power is in your hands. The legislator is behind you. The dental boards are behind you. Uh, uh, your license is key. You can resist and tell them to hit the road. The, the, the office manager wants you to press to you to say, the office yeah, manager, you. you are on the scene. You are over the office manager, not the other way around. You tell mm -hmm. the office manager how the days should go. If they don't like it, report them to the state boards. Uh, for coercion and interference uh, with the practice of medicine and dentistry. Um, you'll be out the door. You'll be out the door. You'll yeah, be fired. Door, but you, the, more, the more we press them, the more cases we get out, the more they will feel squeezed to act right. If an office manager tells you to go into a room and do two fillings, that is, uh, that is interference with the practice of medicine and dentistry. And that's also called the practice of dentistry without a license. Um, if if uh, if uh, if an assistant tells you what to do, what needs to be done, uh, without all interfering with the practice of medicine and dentistry, the only person that can make that decision or should be involved in any of those decisions is you. Um, so keep that in mind. Challenge them and challenge them some more. You are in charge. And then when you when you leave and when you experience what we have informed you today. Come back over to us. Come back to the profession. Come back to the right side of history. Care for your patients and your community. When I got my, uh, I went into an MBA school. Well, I you, know, you will be welcomed. Okay. You will be welcomed by us. You've been on the dark side. We hate your guts and oh, you're you're no. a pariah. No, 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 no. You're you will never hate. Around. I will never hate a dentist or a doctor that comes back to this to this you're side. So we're always going to be in open arms. All of us. All of us think this way. You don't right. hate you. 
you might uh, push back, but we don't hate you. Come back to us. Let's have autonomy on over our profession once again, like it was for thousands of years, dating back to the Indus Valley. Uh, 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 when they were fixing your teeth with with sticks and stones, uh, they weren't uh, stealing your shirt off your back and then and, and, and your, your your little underwear that you had. They were doing it to get you out of pain. So uh, uh, there was yeah. a reason. Um, uh, uh, it needs to stay that way. History repeats itself. These kind of viruses and parasites come and go, and they will come and go more often. They think they're here to stay. They're not here to stay. Their life uh, uh, term is very short. People have had it up to here with these guys. So challenge them, report them, get the state boards involved, and do not for one second allow them to 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 rule and dominate you into doing something you don't want to do or you were trained not to do. And keep challenging them. Keep challenging them. Soon enough, they'll get the message that they work for us, and they need to tune it down and get off that uh, high horse of theirs. And, uh, and and start listening to what we have to tell them and how we want to run our practices and lives. Dr. Davis, uh, it's just absolutely a, 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 a lifetime honor to have known you all of these years and have learned from you and, and have uh, taken in all of these wise uh, lessons that you give. I've seen you write so many articles for so many different groups. You're always polite. That's why everyone likes you. You're, you're polite. You say the truth. You say the facts. That's why they can't challenge you. That's why they run your articles. That's why we all we all love you. I know you have had some hardships in life as well. You overcome it all, but you never compromised. You you know you told me 15 years ago when I first met you that uh, that uh, not everybody gets uh, the same cars dealt in life, and that's yeah. true. And I remember you told me that, and you had some very very big challenges in life, but you never changed, you never compromised, you never changed your opinion about what's right and uh, uh much respect and uh, uh, uh a final message for our colleagues uh dr davis well i don't want you to get discouraged i know a young doctor oh the state dental board all oh, the state attorney general's office most a lot of them are pretty damn corrupt fact be known that's flat out not every state but many 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 states all right people sitting on some of those boards are there, there. It's been co-opted by corporate dentistry. We call that uh, regulatory capture. All right. Uh, wow. you, may not, you may not meet with the the changes on an immediate basis that you'd like to see. You may feel like you're banging your head against the wall. I understand that, um, but really, you're going to have a happier, fuller, richer, more rewarding life if you're on the right side of this. I, I, I'm very serious. Get on the right side of this. Get on the right side of the doctor-patient re relationship, and 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 partake in that uh, with the honor that 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 you really know is in your heart. You should. All right. These other guys don't have a conscience. You people that I'm talking to, you do. You do, and the you want to do the right thing. Cold. So do it. I know it's hard. It's not easy. Do it. Wow. Take Dr. Davis's advice to heart, or uh, for our uh, older colleagues, as you're uh, as you're uh, transitioning out, please do not sell to these corrupt parasites. Uh, please transition in younger doctors so we can continue to survive as independent uh, dentists across the world and independent doctors, and uh, and uh, prosper for uh, for uh, in our careers and as well as more importantly, uh, care for our patient pools so they're not subjected to this scandal and this uh, this crime against what's i mean it's crime against humanity uh, if you yeah. want to really get to, down to to the to the wording so they're not exposed to this crime against humanity uh, dr davis i'd love to have you on board uh, i mean on, on the show more often i think our uh, our audience is going to be very pleased i think a lot of uh, interaction is going to come out of this and a lot of discussion but ultimately there is no single model that where no. they have any ownership that does not cause a conflict of interest of one kind or another. A la carte is the only way you will survive. That's the promise we can make you in time. This is the only way your organizations will start thinking about taking your DSO organizations and making them a la carte and offering them to doctors that way. Stop taking over their banks, stop, uh, um, stop bank accounts, stop paying their bills, stop enumeration, fee splitting, all of the things that you guys do. You're not entitled to fee splitting. It's illegal for you to have any kind of fee splitting. It's illegal for you to have any kind of enumeration out of the monies that a doctor generates. 
those things are illegal. Stop doing the games and you will be left alone. Leave our colleagues alone. And uh, and we will leave you alone. Um, with that said, do you have any other message, Dr. Davis? Oh, I could, oh, I could go into some uh, details on how they set up those purchase and sales agreements when one DSO sells off to a, a private equity or another DSO. Uh, you just raised a lot of things in my head, but that's another 20, 30 oh, minutes. We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back. Don't you worry. This is just a start. And after you're, after you're done and retired, our colleagues will continue what you have done. And when I'm gone, they will continue it, but they'll never have peace. They'll never have peace, not at least on this planet, until they straighten up. They do everything like uh, lawfully, like everybody else, and they leave doctors and healthcare professionals. You're not prey. You're not stupid. They think you're dumb. They think you're oh, they do. Oh, they they do. Don't understand. They, don't, they think we don't understand business and how it works. We are smart. We went through 20 years of school. We have the intellect. We have the respect of the public. Politicians, executives don't have the respect of the politics. They have, have you have, doctor, in your heart, you have something in your heart. You have that concern and that caring and that love for your patients. You have that. I know it's in you. There's no way you'd go through all of that training and education and not have that. These these That's corporate right. managers, they, they do that. not. Have it's that. not in the best interest of these corporations if they get enabled, if they get empowered. It's not in their best interest. They don't want a population of doctors that are business wise. They want a, they want a population of doctors that are in debt and dumbed down on the business from the dental schools who don't offer any business training. And they want a nice time so they can suck them into these corporations and make money. That's what this is about. But we're gonna smarten up and we have been smartening up. We're getting wiser, we're getting better, we're getting smarter, we see their contracts, we know what they're doing. We're watching them like hawks. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the message should come across. Uh, there's a massive operation right now behind this, uh, behind our, our doctor to doctor operation, for example, that will not compromise one iota. For as long as the legislator doesn't change the laws and they stand on the books, you guys will face this heat uh, until they become compliant with the law of the United States. 47 states prohibit their ownership as much as a pencil. Remember that line. They're not allowed to own as much as a pencil in a medical or a dental office and everything that they do is a lie to circumvent the laws. Thank you so much, Dr. Davis. I really appreciate you. I'll have you on a show soon. Hopefully, we'll get another one going early next year. Let's get to work and get this, uh, this show to as many doctors uh, across the world. And uh, I think they'll be very appreciative for uh, uh, our contributions on this matter. And, and do uh, not think you're alone. I, I want, this is for your viewers. You're not alone. We're with you. We uh, are with you. You have colleagues that love you and are with you and care about you. I know you don't see us every day. Uh, I know we're in our, our little clinical practices. We don't meet with each other, but that love is there. It's real. Uh, we know the hardships you go through. Uh, we are a, a brotherhood and a sisterhood, truly. Yes, brotherhood and sisterhood. So to all of our brothers and sisters out there, uh, there should be no confusion. We are one. Uh, and you're fighting for uh, your your uh, your uh, independence. Um, I've been doing it uh, nonstop for over a decade. Doc has been doing it over 20, two decades. There's many others like us that we can connect you with. Uh, we're not after money. It was never about any money. Uh, it was never. It was all about restoring healthcare back and chasing these corrupt operations from the from the edge of the world. Uh, and uh, we're achieving that every year. We're getting better at it and we will continue and there will be no compromise until there is compliance and the doctors are left alone and we get autonomy of our profession. Doctor, with that said, I won't uh, take any more of your time. I look forward to having you back. You have a lovely personality, very bubbly. And uh, I will probably put your information on the site so people can contact you if they need uh, help with depositions or... Uh, or whatever it is, you and I, I know a lot of attorneys that are familiar with these corporations that know them in yeah. and out, and we can help uh, help them uh, uh, a lot. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful yeah. day and uh, enjoy New Mexico. We will uh, see you soon. I appreciate your time and bye-bye. Take care, bud.